Thanks for tuning in to Ag PhD. I'm Brian Hefty. And I'm Darren Hefty. Thanks for joining us. We don't have a whole lot of time today for the show because we got to get out and scout our soybean fields. There are some late season insects, not just on our farm, but on many farms across the country. We're talking bean leaf beetles, soybean aphids, and so many more insects. What will it take to stop them? That will be our discussion today. All right, well, here's one of the other things that I want to talk about today, and that is as you cross a lot of your fields or look at a lot of your fields, late in the year, you notice some lighter spots. So you didn't have perfect rain, you don't have the best topsoil there. So let's talk today about how do we build new topsoil? How can we make that high ground, some of those eroded spots, just as good as some of the low ground? We really want to get into that because there are absolutely things you can do in your lifetime, not in eight generations, to build new topsoil. Well, one other thing you want to do to fix up your fields is control our weed of the week. This one is devastating if you let it go. We'll show you how to stop it on your farm, but first, here's our farm basics. Farm Basics is brought to you by the Liberty Link Trait and Liberty Herbicide from Bayer. The most reliable weed management solution, Liberty Link and Liberty Herbicide are the link to efficient row crop production and sustainable weed management. During our Farm Basics time today, we're going to talk about a commonly asked question we get from non-farmers, and that is, what's the difference between banding and broadcasting fertilizer? We hear you guys talking about this stuff, but why would a person want to band, and what is banding compared to broadcasting? Well, there are a lot of terms that get used in farming, and these two terms are used primarily around fertilizer, but also on uh, some other things like herbicide or weed control. Or insecticide. So, yeah, so when we're talking about, uh, let's just talk about the fertilizer side first. This is plant food that we're putting out there for plants. Now in many row crop fields where we're planting things like corn and soybeans and cotton, uh, row spacings may vary, but a lot of times you're going to see maybe 30 inches in between the rows. So you have a corn plant and then 30 inches away you've got the next corn plant. So when you say broadcasting, that means spreading the same amount of plant food on every square inch of the whole field. When you're looking at banding, that means just placing it in a certain spot. Now the band may be just one inch wide, it may be several inches wide, but the idea behind that that farmers have is, hey, if I only have a plant every 30 inches, how about I just put my food every 30 inches? That way the plants don't have to go very far to get it. Well, what I look at is insecticide. Most of the insecticide that's put out at planting time by corn farmers in the United States, it's not broadcast, it's banded. And the reason why is because all we really care about is killing insects that are going to attack the corn plants. I don't care about insects that are in between the rows. I don't care about insects that are out there just randomly in nature. I just care about the ones that are near, especially my corn seed my seedling, and my roots. So if I just put insecticide there, that's a much more environmentally friendly way to do it, and it's also a more effective way to protect those plants and have a good concentration or a lethal dose of that insecticide near the plant. All right, let's talk about this banding concept just a little bit more. When we're thinking about banding, uh, they could be on the surface, so you just spread it right on top of the ground, or it could be below surface. Many farmers are looking at it like, hey, I don't want to put my fertilizer on top of the ground because if we get a big rain, it could wash away. The other thing is, if it gets really dry in the summer, I'm going to be in trouble because all my fertilizer is up top, I don't have any roots to get that, and I don't have any rain to move that fertilizer down into my root system. So what farmers are doing is trying different types of bands. Now it may be a band right in the furrow, that's the trench that, that you open up to drop the seed in. So it could be laying right next to the seed at planting time. Or uh, it could be a couple inches over and a couple inches down below the seed. That way you've got a little bit of soil in between the plant food and the seed. And when plants are really young and that root system is very small, having a huge concentration of plant food around it can be a little bit hot for the plant. So having a little bit of distance there can be a good thing. Or uh, one thing that we're doing on our farm is we're actually deep banding. So we're dropping our plant food down six or eight inches deep in the soil and then planting right over the top of it. 
Now our root system, when it starts to grow, the roots are out exploring through the soil trying to find plant food. And if they happen to be able to grow straight down to find that plant food, that's where they want to go. They don't want to have to grow big and wide. They want to go straight down and find fertilizer and grow maybe down at a 30 degree angle. Well, this works great for the plants. So farmers are seeing good results, uh, both economically, environmentally, and certainly agronomically when we look at how much yield they're getting off those acres from a smaller amount of fertilizer. So in summary, what we're talking about here is broadcasting versus banding. Broadcasting is spreading anything. I don't care if it's herbicide, insecticide, fertilizer. It's spreading it out over all the ground, whereas banding is putting that fertilizer, herbicide, insecticide, whatever, in strips. Might be near the row, might be below the row, might be in between the row, but still, whatever we're placing, we're placing it in strips. With our Weed of the Week, you're definitely going to be broadcasting a herbicide out there to try and stop it, because otherwise, it can just take over. Can you identify this week's weed? As weed resistance becomes more of a problem across the country, your crop protection program needs to stay flexible to be effective. Hypro Innovative Spray Technologies wide selection of spray tips and nozzle configurations are available to keep your crop protection program right on technology, right on target. I would recommend Morton for many reasons, but one is that they have a long history of standing behind their buildings. Our sales experience with Morton was a nice experience. You know, they told us what it was going to cost, what it was going to be, you know, how it was going to run, and uh, it worked out really well for us. Morton has built me one heck of a nice building, and it should stand for a very, very long time. I was very happy with the workmanship. Check us out online at mortonbuildings.com. A farmer's attention to detail is what makes the difference. You take the time for service management because you know how vital it is to your operation. You service your field like everything else because soil sampling makes all the difference and gets the results you want. Download the app Soil Test Pro and start grid sampling today. Keep your farm growing strong. The more you test, the more you know. Take a look inside any rotary combine and you'll find single rotor technology. Technology Case IH introduced over 35 years ago with the Axial Flow Combine. But unless it gives you more bells and whistles with fewer belts and chains, more power using less fuel, it's not an Axial Flow. Because while the heart of every rotary combine beats red, only Case IH gives you the power to do more. When there's work to be done on your farm, you can't afford to be grounded. Whether for repair or upgrade, you need quality, new use, and rebuild parts fast. Worthington Ag Parts has what you need, and our distribution network offers same-day service to much of the country. And with 15% off all parts ordered in July, now's a great time to get to know us. Worthington Ag Parts, providing quality parts at quality prices and adding value to your farm operations for over 50 years. With new seed traits and chemistries entering the market, your crop protection equipment needs precision and adaptability. Hypro Innovative Spray Technologies has the products to give your applications greater accuracy, less drift, and more coverage. Hypro, right on technology, right on target. Here's one of the big issues that happens in soybeans pretty much every year. Guys have already done their wheat, that crop's done corn, they're done spending any money, and they say, oh my goodness, I've already spent all this money, I just, I'm, I want to be done, okay, it's the first of August, I just want to be done. Well, you can't be done in soybeans. There are so many things that can impact yield yet, from weeds to diseases to our topic today, which is insects in soybeans. And I mean, there are a whole host of insects that could still affect your soybean crop very adversely, whether it's bean leaf beetles, Japanese beetles, soybean aphids, you name it, grasshoppers. I mean, there are a whole bunch of them. We want to talk a little about late season insect control in soybeans today. Well, the great thing about controlling insects today versus 10 or 15 years ago is the prices of insecticide have come way, way down. And as a lot of these products have gone off patent, there are a lot of generic options, uh, and that's helped keep the cost down, keep supplies in pretty good shape, so you have lots of choices and they don't cost much money. So when we're looking at the bugs, the big thing to do is to identify which species are out in your field. 
and very likely it's not going to be just one. It's not going to be just bean leaf beetles in your field. Chances are you're going to have some bean leaf beetles, some grasshoppers, some soybean aphids, who knows what else, but find out what is exactly out there. A sweep net is an essential tool really for any farm operation to be able to walk through, do some sweeping through your soybeans and just seeing what is out there to begin with. Okay, when you are sweeping through the soybeans, you can look at different economic thresholds. And we have some of this information as well on the Ag PhD Field Guide app that you could download for your smartphone or your tablet. But the whole thing is you've got to look at realistic economic thresholds. So, for example, there are some bugs where the threshold hasn't changed in 15 years for spraying. I mean, come on, the soybean price is way higher, yields are way higher, and insecticide is practically free. So the economics have changed dramatically. I'm just trying to say be realistic with your economic thresholds. And if you're looking at data from 10 or 15 years ago or thresholds from 10 or 15 years ago, um, those are wrong. So you've got to look at your information, your farm, your data, your economic threshold, and pull the trigger appropriately. But all I know is when we're out there spraying, a herbicide, fungicide, foliar fertilizer, something else, and all I have to do is throw in an insecticide and it only costs me two extra dollars, my threshold number can be awfully low. All right, let's talk about resistance management just a little bit from the standpoint of using multiple modes of action. The pyrethroids get used a lot out there. Uh, they're cheap, they're safe, uh, they're nice products to work with. They, they can tank mix with just about anything else. Uh, and we kind of forget about something like Lorsban, for example, and, and you say, well, I don't know why I would use that when I've got all these cheap pyrethroids. I can use Lorsban, costs just a little bit more, but it offers a couple different advantages. It gives a quicker knockdown on things like soybean aphids, and it also helps on some of the tough-to-kill bugs uh, like grasshoppers, for example, when they get hardened off and, and become adults. Oh, I don't know though, Darren. I'm going to disagree with you on that. With Lorsban, I don't think it's that good a grasshopper product. The old Furidan was a great grasshopper product. So was Parathion. We don't have either of those products well, today. thank goodness. So you want to try to get the grasshoppers a little bit on the earlier side. Once they get wings and become adults, then it's going to be much more difficult. But basically, you've got three choices here as we talk about late season insects. You've got the cheap pyrethroids, and they're great, except for spider mites. If you've got spider mites, then then you want to go with capture, which is still a pyrethroid, but a different kind, by fenthrin, uh, and then Lorsban. Now, in some areas of the country, if you have spider mites, you might have resistance with the pyrethroids, with organophosphates, you might have to go to something else. But in most of the Midwest, well, mice, mites that's really, really all we're talking mites about. Mites aren't really insects, so I mean, it's, it's True. kind of fortunate that we could control them with those products right, so, and, and still can in some So areas. here's one of the big questions that comes up. I'm going to kill my beneficials if I spray at a relatively low number of insects. Well, let's not forget, what we're trying to do as farmers is produce more food for the world. And if I can produce more food by spraying an insecticide, yep, I might kill a few beneficials. I don't want to, I'd like to not kill the beneficials, and there are some products out today that don't kill beneficials, but they're very specific. They're not going to kill a wide variety of insects. If you can use one of those, great. But all I know is if I can make five more bushels of soybeans by spraying a $2 insecticide, I'm doing it, and I'm doing it every time. Well, and with the beneficials too. If you've got hardly any bugs out there at all and you think, boy, they really aren't hurting anything yet, and you see tons and tons of beneficials in your field, by all means, let the beneficials go. Yep. But you can't wait too long because here's the other thing with bug feeding. Once you've got insects feeding on your crop, they're opening up wounds that's going to let more disease in. So we're seeing many farmers across the country having good results when they're out spraying for those bugs, also adding a fungicide to it. Now with fungicides, it's not, well, I'm going to scout and I'm going to see disease, then I'm going to spray. No, you've got to spray before the disease is there. And let me tell you, if you've got a lot of bugs out there feeding on your plants, disease is coming. So when you're spraying insecticide, really consider, should I add a fungicide to that mix? Here's the other thing. Even if you get really late in the season where you say, oh, my beans are made, I'm all set. No, not necessarily, because there are bugs like bean leaf beetles, for example, that can clip the pods off. So you got to keep scouting all the way until harvest. And I know you don't want to. You're tired. You've spent a lot of money. I know you don't want to look, but you have to keep looking because we don't want to have a nice bean crop drop on the ground because of bean leaf beetles. If you end up in that situation where you have to spray very late in the season, just look at the pre-harvest intervals for every different insecticide you might consider using. Some of them are as little as seven days. That's what you're looking for if you have to spray super late in the season. Well, there are certainly lots of different insects that can attack your soybean crop, 
Make sure that you're scouting every week all through the season to see which different types of bugs are out in your field that could be causing some damage and then treat before they get out of hand and, and just, consider. And just don't give up too early. That's the big message. Consider adding a fungicide in if you've got a lot of feeding going on to protect your plant as well. One other thing you'll need to protect your crop from is our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? There are trillions of hardworking microbes right beneath your feet. Today, Monsanto BioAg is harnessing the power of microbes, creating microscopic farmhands that help plants access nutrients, enhance root and shoot growth, and handle stressful conditions throughout the season, protecting and maximizing your yield potential. We're turning 500 trillion microbes into 500 trillion new farmhands, ready for work. Nature, it's powerful technology. Stop coring your bins with the AgriDry Gravity Grain Spreader. Traditional bin filling systems create uneven concentrations of grain and fine particulates. Uniform grain distribution allows even airflow throughout the entire bin, giving you more control over temperature and moisture content, increasing your grain quality and bottom line. Call us today for more information. Dry load store, one eight five five. With the success of the Case IH Diger Quad Track and Magnum Road Track tractors, it's no secret why Case IH is the leader of the track. So it wasn't surprising when the competition started imitating us. But only Case IH offers a five axle design to give you a smoother ride, more power to the ground, with less firming and compaction. Still, we're flattered. In fact, if we weren't already red, <laughs> we'd be blushing. Uh, we have a school and a church nearby. I actually go to the classroom to educate the students about what's going on here on my farm. The system that I have, I tie everything together. No-till, cover crops. We applied AgriLiquid in furrow with our soybeans this year. It seemed like they jumped out of the soil even though we had the record rainfall. I really feel that I'm feeding my plant on a consistent year-round basis throughout the growing season. Apply gypsoil on your farm to add cost-effective sulfur to soils and improve soil structure. Gypsoil increases calcium and helps flush excess magnesium in tight soils, improve air and water infiltration, and reduce problem wet spots and crusting. Better soil quality means better water quality, so gypsoil is good for the environment too. For more information about putting gypsoil to work on your farm, call 866-GYPSOIL or 497-7645. Visit online at gypsoil.com. Technology is constantly changing the way we farm. Hypro Innovative Spray Technologies are here to keep your farm at the forefront of agricultural innovation. With spray application equipment for any scenario, Hypro is here to put you right on technology, right on target. Either at this time of year or right after harvest, you can really see some of the light spots on your farm, those eroded areas. And many people talk about, well, I could try to build new topsoil, but that's going to take forever. No, it doesn't have to take forever. We want to talk today about five steps you can take on your farm to building new topsoil in your lifetime. Over the next 20 years, you absolutely can make a huge difference on your farm. That's the big thing, I think, is just don't listen to all these people that say, oh, it can't be done and it's going to take your whole farming career to do it. That's fine. Just start doing it. Make the next right decision. And there are a number of right decisions that we're going to talk about right now to help build things on your soil. It's going to build your productivity and make your soil better, even in those tough years on your farm. The first and most important step is to reduce tillage. Now, I'm not saying you have to go complete no-till, but all I can tell you is the most important step to building new topsoil is reducing your tillage. Now, a lot of people will question that and they'll say, well, it seems to me like if I just bury that residue, I'm putting it down in the ground so I should build organic matter faster. No, what happens when you do tillage is you open that soil up and a lot more oxygen gets in the ground and it's like adding fuel to the fire and it just burns up the organic matter faster. So there's a big reason why in the United States we've seen organic matter levels decrease in the last 100 years. 
It's all because of tillage. If tillage is reduced, we're not losing our organic matter. And the big thing now is if you want to build new topsoil, you need to build organic matter. Well, and it doesn't have to be uh, one extreme or the other, no-till or conventional till. Something like strip till, we utilize a lot on our farm. And what our goal is, is to leave the root mass of the last crop intact. So let's just say we're coming out of corn and we're planting soybeans. If we can leave that root ball intact on the corn and untouched, now we'll go in between those rows and plant our soybeans. You give it that much more time to start breaking down naturally in the soil without, as Brian said, introducing all that fuel to the fire. All right, step one was reduced tillage. Step two is plant crops with lots of residue and lots of root mass. So we're talking about corn instead of soybeans, for example. Corn on average has five times the root mass of soybeans. Now this does not mean that you can't ever plant soybeans, but all we're trying to say is if you want to build organic matter and you want to build new topsoil faster, planting corn instead of soybeans would probably be a good option. Well, I like using manure or compost. Whenever that's possible, those are great fertilizer sources, but they're also sources of organic material to put out into your soil that can eventually become organic matter. The other thing that enters into this equation is cover crops. They've really grown in popularity a lot in the last few years. The reason why, in part, is because they help hold soil in place, build organic matter, and you can absolutely build new topsoil. Have something growing on your ground as many months of the year as possible. And the last of our five steps is utilize biological products. Now, I'm not going to tell you that the biological products are just going to change the entire world and, wow, now I can do full-scale tillage because I'm using these. But they do make a difference, especially the ones that can influence root growth. And there are a number of biologicals on the market today that have been proven to increase the number of root hairs and the amount of volume of soil that those roots will explore. So when you get products that can make more roots, that's going to make a better situation for you to build organic matter in your soils. We just want to make sure that you don't ever think, oh, I can't do anything about those eroded hilltops or anything like that. No, you absolutely can build new topsoil. You've got to reduce tillage, use crops that have lots of roots and lots of residue, use some manure and compost whenever possible, and then cover crops and biologicals. Well, please don't consider our Weed of the Week a cover crop. It will cover things, but it's definitely not something you want out in your ground. We'll show you how to stop it coming up next. Weed of the week is wild cucumber. This is a devastating weed, especially when you look at what it does to shelter belts, which you're very aware of, Brian. Well, yeah, and I've had a little issue with this particular weed in shelter belts right on our own farm. And all I know is what I do, rather than trying to spray in the middle of the summer, is literally go out and pull them out of the ground. It's the old style, old school method of simply pulling a weed there aren't a lot well, of them. Well, when, when you have this viney weed that really spreads out, it's yep. amazing how this great big vine that's covering trees up comes out of one root. And the root really isn't that big. That's what that's surprising to me. So yes, this one can get out of hand very quickly and it, it likes it, to climb. Right, too. it climbs, that's... but it, it literally can take down a shelter belt if you let it. So that's why you need to keep monitoring your shelter belts just like you do your fields. We don't really see this out in fields. If we did, I would control it pretty easily, I would think, with 2,4-D, dicamba, Roundup, although Roundup's not the greatest on the vines. I'd say the same thing with the HPPDs. They're not the greatest on the vines. But fortunately, we've got plenty of other products. Well, it's something that's going to start on the edge of shelter belts normally because it does need some sunlight. If you get a good crop canopy, you shouldn't have to fight wild cucumber in your fields. No, but if you're spraying, we would suggest spraying really early in the spring or late in the fall. You don't want to damage your trees. So that's why in season spraying, midsummer spraying, not a real good idea. Just pull that wild cucumber out during the season. That's all the time we have for this week's weed, but Iron Talk is coming up next. Introducing the SoilMax ZD48, the newest addition to the SoilMax Gold Digger lineup. The first plow designed for smaller class tractors, the ZD48 has been tested on tractors weighing between 10,000 and 16,000 pounds with excellent results. Designed for row crop farms, vineyards, irrigation, and specialty crop farms. The SoilMax ZD48 will install tile up to 48 inches deep as well as install 3 or 4 inch tile. The ZD48 truly opens up the world of tile installation to more farms than ever before. 
I love the fact that we get very little grain loss from the head. Other brands, other corn heads, we've seen that um, up to three, four bushel per acre in some instances where we have some dry corn. We're growing as much corn as we can. We don't want to be leaving this out in the field at harvest time. So the fellow's done a nice job of making sure we're capturing almost every kernel that we can. So yes, I would recommend the fellow head to other farmers. At Fisher Tradition Farms, we verus all of our acres, and any new additional acres are automatically verused. Verus maps allow us to know exactly where our soil types change and how much they change. We use AgriLiquids Enhance High Energy N and Access that allows us to add sulfur. We can customize our AgriLiquid products on a per pound, per acre basis as needed. I would recommend Morton for many reasons, but one is that they have a long history of standing behind their buildings. Our sales experience with Morton was a nice experience. You know, they told us what it was going to cost, what it was going to be, you know, how it was going to run, and uh, it worked out really well for us. Morton has built me one heck of a nice building, and it should stand for a very, very long time. I was very happy with the workmanship. Check us out online at mortonbuildings.com. Are you looking for an easy way to apply dry powdered products to your stored grain? Do you want to use the applicator recommended by industry leaders for products like Diacon D and other dry powder products? Changing Time CT applicators successfully apply a diversity of products quickly, easily, and accurately. The innovative CT applicators are designed to give you the most accurate application of products such as talc, inoculants, fertilizers, and other dry products. For commercial use or on the farm, you need the applicator industry leaders are using. CT applicators for the changing time. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. The AFS Connect Farm Management System from Case IH connects you and only you to the information you need most from your equipment from anywhere at any time. AFS Connect, only from Case IH. When seeding cover crops, how do you get a blend of seed evenly across the field? We'll tackle that in today's Iron Talk. When we seed a cover crop, we use a blend and we put it in a drill and just hope for the best. To be fair, we aren't doing a huge amount of acres. Plus, since we aren't harvesting a cover crop, we aren't super worried about having that ideal mix across our fields. However, here are the drawbacks to doing things the way that we do. Number one, you planted a blend for a reason, and the benefits aren't equally distributed in the field. Two, uneven growth this year could lead to uneven growth of your crop next year. And three, uneven growth leads to an uneven distribution of residue. However, the benefit of doing it how we do is that it's inexpensive, and it's easy for us to do it this way. The guys who are doing big acres of cover crops and seeing the best responses are often using air carts and air drills to seed the crop the right way. With three compartment carts, for example, they can get a very accurate spread of three different cover crops with dramatically different seed sizes. If you have the equipment to accomplish this, there's no question that's the ideal way to seed a cover crop. Now, If not, and you're only doing a few acres, you can either seed each crop in the blend separately or just accept a less than perfect spread seeding a blend at one time. So far, we've chosen the latter route, and it's worked out just fine for us. That's it for today's Iron Talk, and now, back to the show. Closed captioning for Ag PhD is sponsored by Norwood Sales. On your farm, you need speed and year-round effectiveness in your tillage program. The Quick Till from Norwood Sales allows you to move quickly through your fields, maximizing time and improving yield. Constructed of heavy-duty materials, the Quick Till is ideal for both spring and fall applications, from preparing a healthy seed bed early in the season to breaking up corn residue after harvest. For more information about how a Quick Till can improve fields on your farm, call Norwood Sales today. That's all our time for today, but before we go, we want to tell you about the Ag PhD radio show. You can join us each weekday at 2 p.m. Central. We take your live phone calls, and you can listen to the show on Sirius XM Channel 147. And don't miss the next Ag PhD TV show. We'll have another Weed of the Week, Farm Basics, Iron Talk, and a whole lot more. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD.
Did you realize that a healthy soil only contains about 50% dirt? In order for the soil microbes and plants to work together properly, soil should contain 25% air and 25% water. Today's farming practices are designed around maintaining that healthy balance. To learn more, visit the Responsible Nutrient Management Foundation at rnmf.org.